like mother, like daughter. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best mother-daughter relationships on TV. Good grief, mother. Not all homosexuals are flamboyant. Oh my god, I have the exact same blouse. I like it better on him. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most memorable mother-daughter relationships on television. These relationships don't necessarily need to be the best or most loving, they just need to be relatable and realistic. We won't be including any animated shows, so unfortunately Marge and Lisa are out. Always be yourself. You want to be sad, honey? Be sad. We'll write it out with you. And when you get finished feeling sad, we'll still be there. From now on, let me do the smiling for both of us. Okay, Mom. Please note, as major plot points are fundamental to a number of these relationships, there will be spoilers, including character deaths. Number 10. Joyce and Buffy Summers – Buffy the Vampire Slayer Last time you made a decision on your own, you split. Yeah, and I took care of myself. I don't need this much active parenting. Joyce Summers is raising Buffy as a single parent, and being the mom to a vampire slayer is no easy task. At first, Buffy hides her secret identity from her mom. But as time goes on, it becomes impossible for Buffy to maintain a divide between these two worlds. I'm I'm not sure how I feel about this. <laughs> Joyce is always supportive, if sometimes a little annoying, and ultimately we know she just wants Buffy to be safe and happy. Though viewers were always worried about something happening to Joyce because she was just a mere mortal, in the end her death was more shocking than we ever could have imagined, namely because there was nothing supernatural involved at all. Mom? Mom? Mommy? Number 9. Claire, Haley, and Alex Dunphy, Modern Family. And I know you like to make trouble for your sister, but it's not going to work this time. You know why? Because your sister's a good girl. I know. I was just like her when I was... Claire Dunphy's two daughters are about as different as can be. So mothering both of them is understandably full of challenges. Oh, okay. Uh, can you shut the door, please? Actually, we're just going to go ahead and leave that open. All the familial relationships on Modern Family are well-crafted, but we particularly love watching the battle of wills between these three strong-willed ladies play out. Claire has to contend with Haley's devil-may-care attitude, while simultaneously contending with the fact that she can barely relate to Alex at all considering how different they are. Don't dork up our room. Don't slut up your college. As always on this show, though, at the heart of all this lighthearted dysfunction is a deep sense of caring and unconditional love. Let <laughs> me get in there. Number 8. Raven and Tanya Baxter – That's So Raven, Mama Like Psychic abilities run in the family, but they seem to have skipped a generation because Raven's mom Tanya doesn't share her daughter's ability to see into the future. I even programmed the speed dial for you. Your best friend in the whole world is number one. Go ahead, try it. Okay. Hey, girlfriend! <laughs> She's still a great mom, though, who put her personal ambitions aside when she stopped her studies in order to have a family. Tanya won't let her daughter get away with anything, but is always fair and is usually up for some lighthearted fun. Sadly, actress Takiya Crystal Kima left the show after season 3 for personal reasons but her character allegedly left the family to go back to school. You go, Tanya! When Raven has her own daughter in Raven's home, their relationship is similarly nuanced and enviable. I get it. And I like being independent. But I also like when I get your attention. The good kind, not the crazy kind. <laughs> oh, baby, you know I can't tell the difference. <laughs> Number 7. Ashley and Hannah Marin, Pretty Little Liars Hannah, I buy you everything you need to be popular. That's not why I do it. Why do you this is something you do? A few times. <sighs> this is about your father, isn't it? The parents of the Pretty Little Liars aren't always stellar at their jobs, but if we could pick one to be a member of our family, it would definitely be Ashley Marin. Hannah's mom is a single parent, her husband having left her for someone else, 
and she and her daughter share a strong bond since it's just the two of them. I want you to know that no matter what happens, you will always be my baby girl. And I will always figure out a way to take care of you. She'll do pretty much anything for Hannah, including sleeping with a detective so that her daughter's record can be cleared. When Ashley becomes a suspect in a murder investigation, for the death of the very same detective that she slept with earlier in the series, Hannah steps up and offers to confess to the crime so that her mother can be let go. I have to do this. Maybe A will settle for ruining my life and leave my mother alone. Neither one of you is going to prison. My mother's already there. If they take her away tomorrow, I'll never get her back. Number six, Sarah Braverman and Amber Holt, Parenthood. When I was your age, I slept with my cousin's boyfriend. Are you kidding? Yes. <laughs> I didn't do that. I smoked and drank a lot. That's why you're so short. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. And the understanding of that concept is what defines the relationship between these two characters. Parenthood is an emotional show all around, but some of the most touching moments in the series take place between Sarah and her daughter Amber. So impressed and I'm so <laughs> in awe of you. And I want you to just go out there and fly. In season one, when Amber makes a huge mistake, Sarah is there to support her. And even when Sarah makes missteps of her own, she's always ready to apologize. When Amber is about to become a parent herself, Sarah is there for her. And don't worry, this isn't the last time you'll see Lauren Graham on this list. I want you to meet your great-grandson, Zeke. Number 5. Emma Swan and Mary Margaret Blanchard, also known as Snow White, Once Upon a Time. Oh my god, you called him? That is definitely not a one-night stand. Oh, okay, I'm still learning. I've never had one before. When you see these two side by side, it's pretty hard to believe that they're mother and daughter. And don't worry, you're not alone in that regard. At first, they didn't even realize their familial connection. This mother-daughter pair was separated for decades before finally being reunited. And even when they did find each other, it wasn't happily ever after. Many challenges lay ahead. Hey, I get it. It's all new for you. This is exciting. Mommy and me classes and songs and first steps and all must be really exciting. Mary Margaret is a total mama bear who wants to make up for lost time by doing everything in her power to make sure her daughter is safe. And in the world of Once Upon a Time, that's no easy task. I'm sorry I let you down again. You didn't. Oh, I was selfish. Yes, you were, but at some point this has to stop. Emma, I'm not ever going to stop trying to protect you. Not ever, I don't care what you do or say. I know. Number four, Rebecca and Kate Pearson. This is us. So I have a little surprise for you. I made this from the first dress that I wore the first time I performed in front of a whole bunch of people and I was really nervous and I'm telling you, wearing this gave me confidence. So I thought that you might wanna go upstairs and try it on and maybe wear it tonight. Yeah. Some mother-daughter pairings on this list make us feel warm and fuzzy all the time but others are here because of the contentious relationships they have that are oh so relatable. Rebecca and Kate have always had a difficult relationship, with Kate being jealous of her mother's beauty and singing ability since she was a young girl. Be lonely when you're not strong I'll be your friend I'll help you carry Rebecca isn't flawless herself, often making Kate feel bad about her weight, though she usually does this inadvertently. When everything falls apart, though, Rebecca is always there to help Kate pick up the pieces, whether she wants it or not. You know, weddings can be very emotional. They stir all kinds of things up. But that's why I'm glad you have Toby now to go through these kinds of things with. Number three, Sophia Petrillo and Dorothy Zabornak. The Golden Girls. You're making this whole thing up just to rub it in. You have never met these people. Jealousy is a very ugly thing, Dorothy. And so are you in anything backless. <laughs> Most young women are happy to gain their independence and move out at some point during young adulthood. 
But can you imagine your mother moving back in with you when she's 80? Dorothy and Sophia don't always have the easiest relationship. After Sophia moves in with her daughter when her retirement home burns down. You know, sometimes I really cannot believe my ears. I know, I should have taken them back when you were seven. <laughs> there are plenty of sarcastic remarks and sideways glances here, that's for sure. But there have been so few portrayals of a mother and daughter pair in their older years that this relationship will always be near to our hearts. Ma, ma, I am not gay. I just wanted to get your reaction. I'll tell you the truth, Dorothy. If one of my kids was gay, I wouldn't love him one bit less. I would wish him all the happiness in the world. It's because you're the greatest mother in the world, and I love you. Number two, Jane and Xiomara Silvia Nueva Jane the Virgin. It's the craziest thing, right? These pregnancy tests keep coming back positive, and there's gotta be a reason, right? Like some kind of hormonal thing. There or... is a reason. And the reason the test came back positive is I accidentally inseminated you two weeks ago. You what? You probably know the basic premise of Jane the Virgin, which is that 23-year-old Jane Villanueva gets pregnant despite the fact that she's never had sex. One of the reasons for her virginal status is that her mother, Sio, had her when she was just 16, which spurred Jane on to live her life differently. Man, I get this feeling when I'm around Raphael. Honey, honestly, I think it's just a chemical thing. I had that once with someone, and it's easy to mistake it for something more. Are you talking about my father? It isn't always smooth sailing for these two, considering their very different personalities and the many issues that always seem to arise between them. Sometimes Jane is forced into the position of being the more mature one in the relationship, but ultimately you know there's only love between these two. And after he broke up with me, you were very sad. Do you remember that? I didn't want that to happen again, so after I kept things casual. To protect me? Yeah. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Sounds kind of big. You know you can always talk to me. I'm fine, Mom. Okay, kill me. Honestly, I'm just Mom. saying, I'm that type of mom. I'm very open. You know, my parents never wore clothes. So. <laughs> it's nothing. It's totally world ending. I want to show you some pictures of where Dad's staying. What? I want to make sure you know what's involved with visiting dad in prison, okay? That forehead is not improving. What? Are you sure? It's getting bigger. The whole face will be out of proportion. No, but look at the nose. No. It's elongating now. The see? nose is not the problem. The nose you can fix, but this gigantic forehead. Well, there's always bangs. You were yelling at him. Mm-hmm. And you were right. It's none of your business. Yes, yes, of course. I just hope it was about funding for the arts. You never know what's going on with somebody, sweetie. Can't take it personally. The whole move is just like a bad dream on repeat. I oh, know. Number one, Lorelai and Rory Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. And everyone was like, what do you want with one meatball? And I was like, it's a mother-daughter thing. And I'm sure he thought I was nuts, but he was so nice. It probably comes as no surprise that this mother-daughter duo was our number one pick. Has there ever been a show that's so focused on this ever important relationship? Lorelai and Rory may be exceptional because of how close they are in age, but in many other ways, their relationship mirrors the ones that many of us have had with our own mothers. Mom, thank you for saying all those- What were you thinking? Staying out all night, are you insane? I'm sorry, it was an accident. You're talking to the queen of staying out all night. I invented the concept, this is no accident. You can't do this, period. They disagree, they fight, and sometimes they even have massive blowouts. But more often than not, these two are there to be each other's best friends and confidants, unconditionally supportive. What viewer hasn't wished that they could have a mother like Lorelai at some point or another? As she guided me through these incredible 18 years, I don't know if she ever realized that the person I most wanted to be was her. I'm not crying. Crying a little. Crying a little, but not blubbering. That's what we meant when we said no crying. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.